Peter Colossi is the CEO of Green Swan Capital Corp. Peter, welcome to the Investor Intel studio. Nice to be back, Fred. Uh, Cobalt. Let's talk about Cobalt. What are its uses and what's, what are the issues with Cobalt currently? The experts are calling for a global shortage of Cobalt beginning this year. Cobalt's a byproduct mainly of nickel and copper mines. With the price of those commodities so low, uh, many nickel and copper mines are shutting in, decreasing the supply of Cobalt. Amnesty International is also involved in imposing an ethical supply chain out of some production from Af Africa. Experts in the field are expecting a 10 to 15 percent drop in global production at a time when demand is skyrocketing. And the demand is primarily from uh, batteries for EVs? That's true. About 50 percent of the usage of cobalt is medical, industrial, super alloys, batteries, ceramics, paint. Um, but 50% is electric batteries, what we typically call lithium ion batteries. The periodic table is unforgiving. If you're going to have a rapid charge discharge lithium ion battery, you must have cobalt in it. For example, just the Tesla Model 3 will consume roughly 7.5 million kilograms of cobalt just for that one model, that one run of vehicles. Well, if there are ethical issues in parts of the world where most of the cobalt historically has been coming from, if there are questions about uh, demand increases and lack of supply, being in the Sudbury Basin is pretty exciting. What have you found up there? Well, Sudbury is a bizarre place geologically. There's nowhere else in the world like it. There was an asteroid impact roughly 1.85 billion years ago, which makes Sudbury a unique stew of polymetallic deposits. And if you look at this map, you will see that in the middle are the sediments and metasediments, basically your waste host rock. And all of the producing mines in the Sudbury region are along the edges of the basin, along the fault lines, along the offsets. And those companies historically include Glencore and its predecessors, Inco. Inco, Stelco, uh, Wallbridge Mining, all your Sudbury mines are on the edge or on the cracks or on the offsets. There's nothing in the middle of the basin. And Green Swan has found a cobalt, gold, nickel, copper property towards the southeast edge of the basin, right beside the Glencore property near the Manchester offset. Before we get into exactly what you found, um, the area is just is just brimming with tech, with the expertise and the infrastructure, and you've got great relationships with uh, the local personnel. We do. Um, Green Swan takes its relationships with uh, communities very seriously. We're very active in CSR. Uh, right now, if you look at this map, you can see the location of our main body of claims, and immediately to the west and slightly to the north is the Glencore property, the famous Sudbury smokestack. So we're easily accessible for infrastructure, mining knowledge, mining wisdom, supplies, road access, water access, whatever we need will be taken care of, given our proximity to Glencore. When I saw you earlier this summer, Peter, you'd just been up walking the property a bit. You had a bag of rocks. You were pretty excited taking grab samples. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Uh, it's a tough property to walk. I've been on harder, but not too many. It's about a 14-kilometer hike in and out to the main area, which we call Ed's Watering Hole. Ed's Watering Hole hasn't been worked very much over the years. The property as a whole has been worked since the 1880s, but people were looking mainly for gold, copper, and nickel towards the north end. We appear to be one of the first groups to go over the hill down to Ed's watering hole and we have found a shocking amount of cobaltite in quartz veins and the assays have returned very good numbers for cobalt, quart, cobalt, gold, nickel and copper. Glencore's annual report on mining says that their production averages 0.03% cobalt. Our highest sample to date is 4.5%. Wow. And it's visible, not just visible cobalt, visible gold. You've been so showing me some pretty fancy rocks. We do have visible gold. Um, we have sampled up to 15 grams of gold per ton out of grab samples. There is visible gold and there are visible cobaltite grains in the quartz veins. It's a very blessed property. You haven't done any drilling yet. What's, what's going to happen with the drill bit? We've met with the geologists and the rest of our team. Our plan is, is to have a drill in the ground around Ed's watering hole at the south end by mid-November of this year. Everything that we're doing now is in anticipation of that. We've had an excavator in clearing trees, discovering additional contact zones between the Gabbro and the Nipissing Daya base. 
We've remapped the property to make sure that our property lines are right. We've remapped some of the key data points. We're washing the rock this week to expose the outcroppings and the, the contact zones. We will take additional samples, take the month of October to think about what it all means, and drill into November. Peter, you're, you're funded uh, to do some drilling starting soon, and uh, we look forward to seeing the results. Let's, let's talk about the, the board and, and the rest of the management team. We're very fortunate to have a deep board that's very experienced. Brian Crawford, our CFO, also a director, very well known in mining circles, um, extremely well skilled as a CFO, keeps me in line. We have Ed Stringer, who's lived in Sudbury most of his life, prospector, a local wealth of knowledge. He's like that guy from the old movie, The Great Escape. Whatever you need, Ed can get for you. So he's been a tremendous resource. And we have Dr. Tom McCandless from Vancouver on the board, who's been a great oversight of the entire program, added a lot of wisdom to our insight into the property and where we should start our exploration. And lastly is Judy Baker, very well-known Toronto geologist, who's also on the board of Namaska Lithium, which just graduated to the TMX. And congratulations to Judy and her team. Peter, you've got, you've got this boulder in front of me. Let's just talk about this for a second, because we've talked about visible gold, we've talked about visible cobalt. Greens, cobaltite greens. How unique is this? Well, I walked the property, and I don't understand how you can talk about a property until you've actually walked it. We picked this up in the south end. This is a polymetallic rock that has some visible gold in it across the top. There's sulfide seams, there are quartz veins. It's extremely heavy, Fred. It's a highly mineralized rock. Mm -hmm. And we are embarrassed to have a plethora of those around Ed's watering hole. So we're very excited about the drill program and we're expecting great results. I hope that was a bit of gold that fell off my hand. You can keep that. Thanks, Peter. Always nice, Fred. Thanks for having me in.